Number 28. Letter A. A daredevil is attempting to jump his motorcycle over a line of buses parked end-to-end by driving up a 32-degree ramp at a speed of 40 meters per second. How many buses can he clear if the top of the takeoff ramp is at the same height as the bus tops and the buses are 20.0 meters long? All right, so let's sketch a, a quick picture. So let's just say that this line will represent the um, horizontal uh, component. Not of anything, but just of the axis, of the uh, coordinate system. And here's the Y. So what basically what they're saying is when they say, how many buses can he clear if the top of the takeoff ramp is at the same height of the bus tops? Uh, basically what they're talking about is that uh, this particular location right here, right, once he takes off, is going to be at the same height of all of these buses that will be underneath. And actually what I should do is start it right over here, right over here, right? These, these would represent zoom, zoom, all the buses, etc. Right, so basically he's going to take off and try to clear as many of these buses as he can. Okay, now each of these buses <clears throat> is, as they mentioned, twenty point zero meters long. So each of these is twenty point zero meters. Great. Now let's draw in his initial velocity vector here. So uh, it says that he will be leaving the ramp. Okay, as soon as he's in free fall. So. Actually, if I draw like a little ramp over here, right, he's going to ride his little motorcycle on up. Looks more like a skateboard, but whatever. He's going to ride it up, and then he's going to be launched. Okay, and he's going to travel some distance. All right. So let's draw in that initial velocity vector. And it should look something like, eh, let me straighten it out a little bit. It should look something like that. Okay. It's at an angle of 32 degrees, it says. Right. So 32 degrees. And he's riding at a speed of 40.0 meters per second. So basically what they want us to find, okay, is we're trying to find how far can he go? Because we want to find how many buses he can clear, right? So what we're really interested in is we're really interested in this overall horizontal distance that I'm going to call X. This is really what we're interested in. Now the thing is, in order for me to calculate how far it goes horizontally, I got to know how long this thing is in the air, right? So that's really, so in order to get to X, I first need to get to time, okay? In order to get to time, I need to figure out stuff about the Y dimension, okay? So let me just now, great, so let me just now break this up into something. Let's break up the initial velocity into components. I'm going to draw a separate set here. Let's draw in that um, initial velocity vector. And I'm just doing it over here so that we have a little room. I'm not going to crowd up all the other stuff. So we got an X component here of the initial velocity, right? And we have a Y component of that initial velocity as well. That should be there. That's Y. And then this is X. So our, what we actually have to do is solve for both first, okay? Remember that the magnitude of that uh, resultant vector here, the initial velocity, is 40. So to first solve for this x, we know the hypotenuse, we know this angle, and we're going to be using the adjacent side, so we're going to be talking about cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of 32 will now equal the x value over 40.0. So simply x will equal now... So we've got cosine 32 times 40. And we'll do two sig figs, so we'll do 34. 34, uh, that is meters per second, because this is really the initial velocity, right, in the x direction. Okay, wonderful. So let me just vx or vix, I'll put. And now let's solve the same thing, though, for y. Okay, let's just erase this. Just remember it's going to be really v... I, y. So let's, uh, in order to solve for that, I'm going to use cos, uh, excuse me, sine. All right, so sine, let me put it over here. So sine of theta will equal the opposite side of the hypotenuse. Sine of 32 will equal the initial velocity in the y direction times 40. So the initial velocity in the y direction will equal sine of 32 times 40. 
and that works out to be 21. So 21 meters per second, great. Now to solve for the time, I need to use my Y component value, okay? So let's do that next, okay? Let's list all the things we know of in the Y direction or all Y components. Okay, let's just list them out. So we know the initial velocity in the Y direction is gonna be 21 meters per second and it's positive. We also know since there is symmetry to this problem, right, given the picture, meaning that it takes off at the same height we want to uh, find where it lands, that the final velocity in the um, y direction will be the same as the initial in terms of magnitude, but of opposite direction. Initially it's going up, then it's coming down. So this should be negative 21 meters per second. I know the acceleration in the y frame is gravity because it's essentially a free fall problem. And I don't know, I, I, I know the height, right? The height differential between the start and the end is actually gonna be zero, right? So I do know that the y is zero uh, meters, and now I'm looking for time. Okay, so what formula can I use? Looks like equation number one will do as well on the top right-hand side. So that means the final velocity in the y direction will be equal to the initial velocity in the y direction plus acceleration in the y direction times time. <sighs> So the final velocity is negative 21 meters per second. The initial velocity was 21. The acceleration is negative 9.80, and the time is the unknown. So subtract the 21 on over. We have negative 42, negative 9.80t. Now just divide out the negative 9.80. And now time will equal 42 divided by 9.8. So we get a value of 4.3. So it's 4.3 three seconds that this biker will be in the air, okay? Now, so this time up here, I actually just solved for now. That's not our question anymore. So we know that it's 4.3 seconds. Now we found the time by calculating for things in the Y frame, which normally is the case, but remember time knows no frame. So that time value applies to the Y frame just as well as it applies to the X frame. So now what I want to do is take this time and now see if we can calculate the horizontal, uh, horizontal displacement. So in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to label um, all of now our X components. So let's do that up here. So X components. Remember my frame of the problem here is from the initial point now to the final point because I'm trying to find the total displacement, okay? So these are the two points that you really want to focus on. What do you know about these points? So the initial velocity in the x direction is what we calculated on the bottom left. That we did already. So that's 34 meters per second. Now, what's the acceleration in the x frame? Is there any accelerations left or right in the problem? No, there never will be in a free fall problem. So it's zero meters per second squared. That tells us then that the final velocity uh, the final velocity in the x direction should be now the same as the initial velocity in the x direction because there is no acceleration. Okay, that's great. And it should be the same sign because here the object is moving to the right and still it's moving to the right at the end. So same sign, not like in the y frame. The displacement in the x direction is what we're looking for, and now the time it took to go from the initial point to the final point is the 4.3 seconds. This is the critical step. Now I know everything I need to know in order to find my displacement. So what formula would you like to use? I mean, we can choose a simple one. It doesn't have to be very complex, right? Uh, okay, so let's do, let's just do, right? VI, let's just do actually the velocity formula. Velocity is equal to displacement over time, right? We can choose one of these guys as well, but let's not overcomplicate it. So inst so the uh, average, really this is average velocity, right? But if it starts at 34 and it ends at 34, obviously the average is just 34. So this would be 34 meters per second is equal to my X, direct, X component divided by 4.3. So just do a cross multiplication there to get your answer. So we got 34 times 4.3. And uh, the number works out to be, uh, it's 146.2, but I really need two significant figures because the degree measure was only two sig figs, so I got to round it to 150. 
So there's 150 meters. Okay. All right, so that's cool. So that's how far he will travel in the x direction. So this whole this whole yellow length is now 150 meters. So how can we now find how many buses he can clear cuz that's the question. Well, if you know that the whole length here is 150 meters and each bus is 20 meters, can't we just do a simple division? Right? Can't we just take 150 meters, divide it by 20 meters, and that will tell us how many buses there are? Yes, right? So 150 divided by 20 works out to be 7.5. So 7.5 buses. Buses he can clear. But now, how many buses? Yeah, I mean, the answer is technically 7.5. But, I mean, would you, we, we can't cut a bus in half, <laughs> okay? So, um, really, so how many buses can he clear? He can safely clear, we can say. He can safely, I'm going to write, I'm going to write, uh, safely. Safely, I don't need, did I even spell that right? Is the E in here? Yeah, there we go. Safely clear seven buses. Okay, he can safely clear that many buses. All right, so that would be the answer for letter A. Then it says in letter B now, discuss what your answer implies about the margin of error. That is, consider how much greater the range is um, is than the horizontal distance he must travel uh, to miss the end of the bus. So basically what they're talking about is, let's say he can safely clear seven buses. Okay, that means that he would... That means the total bus length, right? Meaning from the start of bus one to the end of bus seven would be 140 meters. Now we know if these conditions hold true that he's traveling at 40 meters up the ramp and it's exactly at 32 degrees. That means that he will travel and clear 150 meters. So what's the margin of error? So we to simply find the margin of error, uh, what we can do is we can take the difference between these two measurements, the 150 and the 140, and then divide it by the uh, 140. Okay, let me just make sure. So this applies about the margin of error. That is, consider how much greater the range is than the horizontal range he must travel. Yeah, I mean, they don't even want it in kind of percentage terms anyway. But... They're just saying that we only have a margin of error here of 10 meters, right? So we would take the 150 minus the 140 to find 10 meters. And then if you wanted to take these 10 meters, I'll write it in the middle. If you wanted to then take these 10 meters and then divide that by the, um, actually, mm, we should actually divide it by the 150 because we're trying to find the margin of error given his speed and the angle of the ramp. We actually should be dividing it by 150. And if we do that, right, 100 divided by 150 simply comes out to be now, and then if I wanted to multiply it by 100 to get like a percent, it would be 6.67%. So there's only a 6.67% margin of error there. Very tight margin of error, especially when you're considering jumping over a whole bunch of buses. So hope this helped, guys. Please remember to subscribe. Definitely helps us out, and I will see you in the next video.